Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I'm up to my mischievous experiments. Today, we're actually gonna be talking about Blight itself. Now I'm in the middle of a ravaged Blight map or a Blight ravaged map experiment where hopefully I'm gonna be doing 50 Blight ravaged maps, tallying everything. We're not gonna talk exactly about that right now. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to run them the most effectively that you possibly can do, in my opinion. And a lot of people in chat have been helping me with this. I've been thrown into the deep end and exploring these uber difficult blight ravaged maps. Now you may know about blight maps themselves, which you spawn in and there's a bunch of kind of, uh, you know, cysts and everything everywhere that you can build a ton of towers and it usually takes, you know, five, six minutes and you put everything down and uh, you kill all the mobs. But these Blight Ravaged maps are basically the uber version of them. Now, everything that you hear today can work in any sort of Blight map. And I'm going to be going over everything that I've learned that will really help you as much as you can to do these maps. Now, right here, we've got a Tier 14 Haunted Mansion Blight Ravaged. Now, you can see up the top the Implicits. Every Blight Ravaged map has a monster level of 85. And then the rest of these Implicits are on Blight Ravaged, uh, Ravaged maps as well. So they get extra move speed. They get 200% percent more life but uh the quantity also affects the blight chest at 40 percent value they can be anointed up to nine times instead of the usual three they can have a maximum of three of the same oils anointed and obviously natural inhabitants of the area have been removed so that is a blight ravaged haunted mansion map and for those who don't know you can use oils on blight maps to anoint them to give them rewards uh, down below, I'm going to include this stuff here as well, but I've got a li uh, link to the Blighted Map Anointments right here. And then also Ring Anointments, which are very important and we'll talk about in a moment. Ring Anointments are going to be really, really strong, and that's what you're going to be using, especially in these Blight Ravaged maps. Now, as I said, I've been thrown into the deep end with these maps, and I've failed quite a few of them today, but I've learned a lot, and we're almost at 100% success rate now that I've learned a lot. I've run uh, about 20 of them, and... Uh, well, I've run more, but I've failed, you know, i failed maybe, you know, eight, nine of them uh, out of the, well, I guess 30 that we've run. So I've, I've failed quite a few, but now at the tail end of this, I'm basically succeeding in most of them. And we're going to talk about, talk about all of that. The first thing that I will mention is actually map layouts themselves. There's actually a lot of different types of layouts of maps that you can have. Um, there's, you know, ports, strands, uh, ivory towers, all this kind of stuff. But I've settled on three that I think are the best. Now these are the S tier, and if you run these and you do all of the other stuff I'm gonna be talking about in this video, then you've got a very, very high success uh, rate. Probably 100% if you're good and if you learn. However, there are some zones that are really bad. So one right here is Haunted Mansion. I've been running a lot of Haunted Mansion. Uh, another one is Crimson Temple. Let me just go over to my uh, spreadsheet over here. Crimson Temple right here is another one that we've been running. Uh, Haunted Mansion and then also City Square, which actually City Square are fairly rare because uh, they don't actually show up in the bulk section of the trade. Uh, if you search for, you know, if you if you go into the bulk section and you go down to uh, Blight Ravaged, City Square is not actually here. You have to search for it manually by searching in Blight Ravaged City Square map right here. Coming up with them. But uh, yeah, the, uh, people aren't really selling these ones right here. So I've been buying mostly the Haunted Mansion and Crimson Temple and then the City Square there as well. Now you will notice here as well, I have tried out uh, Port, wherever it is, Port. I've done a couple of them, but Port, even though it's got relatively okay layout itself, you know, uh, fairly small kind of corridor-ish areas, the actual tower spawns that the uh, port maps give you are really, really bad. Now we're gonna be jumping into this haunted mansion in a moment, right before we, um, uh, right after I finish talking about this and I'll show you exactly what I mean by, um, you know, corridors and blockage points, um, choke points as I like to call them. They are very important in a map. So any sort of indoor light map is extremely important. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the ring anointment, anointments that I like to use. First of all, we want uh, this one right here. Your meteor towers create burning ground for three seconds on hit. What I'm actually going to do now is actually jump into the map and I'll show you right here what, we, what we're talking about. Also, remember, sacrifice fragments work on your blight maps right here. So make sure that you uh, pay attention to that. All right. 
So, let's just run this one right here. Uh, we'll jump in. So, first of all, your meteor towers create burning ground. Oh, unable to act open portals to the area. This is a bit of a bug at the moment. You just go again, and hopefully it'll open. There we go. Um, so, the meteor towers creating burning ground. As the burning ground lands on the ground, that will start to just burn everything around it. Only for three seconds, but the meteor towers are firing every, you know, two seconds anyway. The great thing about the burning ground is it deals a lot of damage and it goes through any sort of resistances that the mobs might have. If they're resistant to fire towers, it's still going to go straight through them, which is extremely nice. So, we open up to this haunted mansion and you can see already what I talk about choke points. It's got these very narrow doors right here. And th this is actually a really good layout here. It can spawn up to four doors, but right here it's only spawned two doors. This should mean that this is going to be a very, very easy map if you follow all of the instructions. Now the second anointment that we're going to be looking at is Empowering Towers. Uh, empowering Towers with 25% increased effect is extremely strong. Because we're going to be using a combo of four towers. The first tower that we've talked about already is the Meteor Towers. Now these are a tier 4 tower that you're going to upgrade all the way to tier 4. And then the rest, the other three, are just going to be upgraded to tier 3 because they're actually the best versions. Upgrading them to tier 4 of their specialized versions are not going to be the best way to go about it. The first one is going to be Empowering Towers. Within those Empowering Towers, we need to make sure that we also put Frost Towers and Stun Towers. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as we spawn all of this. All right, so we're going to click on Cassia right here, and I'm going to try and talk through as much as I can while trying not to die because these maps are really difficult. But as I said, these Blight Ravage map techniques right here should net you an almost 100% uh, success rate, guaranteed. Doesn't really even matter what build you're playing. Just honestly, socket in Culling Strike on any of your links. Yeah, this build is strong, but Blight Ravage maps, the, the health on the monsters is so crazy that like your build actually doesn't matter too much at all. All right, let's jump into it. So as you click on the pump, uh, Cassia is going to spawn, obviously, uh, some stuff like this. And we actually got a really, really good spawn here at the start. So, I'm going to start with one Empowering Tower right here. I'm going to upgrade it to level 3. And then I'm also going to spawn a Chilling Tower and a Seismic Tower. The Frost and the Stun. And upgrade these to level 3 as well. What I'm also going to do sometimes, uh, especially on the choke points, is I like to put um, a, a, a Sentinel. So a fully upgraded Tier 4 Sentinel. And then at the back end right here, I'm going to put a fireball tower and I'm going to upgrade that to tier four. So this is basically exactly how, you know, it should look, but in multiple spots. If I have this one right here, and then if I build another one over here, once I can start to build another one over here, I'm pretty much immortal. There will be one or two mobs that will get through, um, potentially, if they're, say for example, if they've got cannot be stunned, and then they're also immune to frost, from one of these ones down here, then, you know, that's that's a little bit painful. But you'll start to see mobs starting to spawn here. And I'm not going to attack at all, and I'm going to show what that actually does look like. Uh, all right. So let's just wait for the mobs to uh, come this way. I also like to sometimes, you know, just for some more damage, I like to put uh, Lightning Chain Arc Towers are really strong as well. Um, but, uh, oops, <laughs> this, this uh, minion's uh, so strong that he's actually just going to be blocking all of these right here. Um, but these guys look like they're immune to lightning because that arc tower is not doing anything. But once they start getting in here, I'm going to put another tower right here, another flame tower. Once they start coming in, uh, it's just going to start to slow them and stun them all the way down, and you can see them right there. Now, the big thing in these maps are the bosses. The trash mobs, you can actually kill them yourself with pretty much any build, but the bosses have so much life. This build right here almost has, I would say, 6 million, 7 million single target DPS right now. And that is not nearly enough to defeat the bosses at all. What you really need to do is set all of this up so it can really just slow everything down. Now, I'm just going to, uh, you know, kill some kill some mobs here just so we can try and uh, spawn some bosses so I can show what's going on there. I might even spawn another... Uh, I'm going to spawn another stun tower right here. Another thing to note about empowering is even though we've got this big circle here, they have to be in line of sight. The other towers for the empowering to power up have to be in line of sight. You can see right here, this tower has got a small circle around it. This means it's being empowered by the empowering. But this one around here, because it's actually not in line of sight, it doesn't actually have that circle. So that's something very, very important to, uh, to understand. All right. So we've started spawning some other stuff over in the other direction. So I'm just going to quickly make sure 
that I spawn everything here. Upgrade to tier 3. Tier th oopsies. Tier 3. Tier 3. But make sure you don't go too far away for too long. Otherwise, your towers will stop attacking. Alright, so we got some bosses over here. So hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on with the bosses once I just, you know, build a minion over here. Make sure that the minion is upgraded. I'm also just going to quickly put a tower. One second, guys. I just got to make sure that I don't fail this one here because you have to pay quite a bit of attention. All right, that should be good over there. All right, so we actually come have a look over here. And you can see there are two massive bosses here. And they are getting permanently stunned and permanently slowed down. So they literally just stay put. And that's what's so strong about this combo right here. And just to, uh, you know, just for good measure, I'm going to put an arc tower at the back here as well. Right there. And then I'm going to put, you know, maybe uh, another stun, another freeze, another empowering here. So it hits the stun. Uh, maybe another lightning over here. Um, you'll you'll find that you have more than enough, um, uh, whatever essence it's called, the blight essence, to be able to build as many towers as you want. But basically, even though there's a ton of monsters spawning now, I'm almost in a spot where I can just sit in the middle here and wait. Now, as I said, I've got Culling Strike in my links because sometimes a big uh, bad boss does get through for whatever reason. And so you just want to have as much, you know, time as you can to uh, kind of DPS him down. And the Culling Strike really helps with these big bosses here as well. Just to, you know, get them out of the choke points if they're on low health. But yeah, that's basically how this is. Once you get that down, once you get the towers down and the combinations, that's all you really need. While we're waiting here, I'm just going to quickly talk while I keep an eye on everything. You can see boss, boss, boss. They're basically, you know, right in spot there and they're not doing anything because they're just getting crazy stunned uh, through everything right there. Uh, I'm going to talk about the map itself and the anoints and we'll talk about that at the end. But basically, you can also anoint your maps. Now, I like to use crimson oils or azure oils, which are for lucky chests. Crimsons are more, more expensive, but azures can also give you, you know, lucky chests. But uh, on any map that I run, any Blight Ravaged map, I like to use um, Amber as well. Amber is going to mean that we have 60% uh, less cost of creating towers, which is vitally important for the start. The start is the most important part, to be able to make sure that you build up your defenses as accurately as possible, um, so that, you know, you get to this stage where you're, you know, 38 seconds left, where there's a ton of monsters spawning, but they just can't get through your defenses because you've spawned everything possible. Um, uh, so Amber Oils uh, are extremely strong. The other one that's good, I think, is Violet, which is gonna, just going to give 60% uh, chance for an extra chest on any of the um, areas. And if you want to, you can use Black Oils, but I probably wouldn't. But that's that's basically it. If you Actually, if you want to really invest money, Opalescent is also a very, very strong one. But that's basically it. Amber Oils are uh, all you really need there. All right, so, you know, it's ending up now. That's basically, uh, that's basically it. I will just, you know, talk random stuff at the end of this video now while I open the uh, the rest of this loot, and then I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek to my, my experiment and how much we've actually dropped. So, uh, yeah, that's all I really have to talk about with all of this. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's kill the rest of the mobs. There will always be stragglers, right? You'll always jump over here. You've got some mobs over here. This big boy's getting uh, crazy stunned over here. So we'll just, you know, maybe... Uh, I'll strike him down, and then we'll just jump over here, kill the rest of these mobs right here, as they are, uh, as they're coming. Oh! Uh, yeah, as you can see, the mobs are really, 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 really dangerous. Uh, <laughs> you gotta be pretty careful about that. Now, there are some big things also on the mods of the map itself. You can obviously roll these maps, and you can roll them rare. You need to be careful. Obviously, you don't really want to roll too many of the mods uh, that your build is bad with. You also do not want to roll at all. Mobs cannot be slowed below base value. That is an absolute brick for these maps, especially if you're using, you know, all of these uh, slowing things. It basically means that your the chilling towers will do absolutely nothing. Another big one is monster life. More monster life just means that things are going to be way tankier and they will be stunned less. So more monster life is, you know, it's not a brick, but it's not great to have on your map. Um, that's all I really try to not roll on my maps. Uh, chain is also a very, very big one. If you've got any sort of minions, don't roll chain. It's going to mean that basically any projectile that wasn't going to hit you and hits your minions is then going to chain onto you, and that's going to be extremely dangerous. All right, we've got these guys right here. Just uh, got to be a bit careful. These little stragglers can sometimes really hurt, so we have to just make sure that we don't uh, don't die there. All right. 
Okay, and that should be done. All right, relatively simple, hey? Badger says after he fails uh, quite a few while learning this strategy, but it's it's very strong. So, you know, uh, obviously some stuff drops at the start here, all your quantity and uh, everything like that. But then you can just go around and start picking everything up. And these Blight Ravage maps, they drop a lot of loot. So obviously we can just try and pick up as much as we can here. Uh, they drop a lot of stacked decks. We've got actually quite a lot of currency here. We've got seven, five, seven, nine. That's actually super strong. We already opened a currency. Uh, but they drop a ton of oils. They drop a six link death bow, which is kind of cool. That's probably just a divine, but that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, the loot is really, really good and I'm really enjoying this. I probably couldn't do this for a week because, you know, it's not exactly my playstyle, but it's extremely profitable. As we will see once I do release my 50 Ravaged Blight maps with, you know, all of the currency invested and all of the currency back. Um, but you can see right here, you know, silver oils drop. I haven't dropped a gold oil at all. At all. This is my 21st map and I still have not dropped a gold oil. They're extremely rare. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll go through, we'll pick up the rest of the loot. Um, I hope you're enjoying this video. I know this is a little bit of a slow point as we're uh, getting through all of this. Uh, if you're on stream, because this is being recorded live on stream right now, if you're not, if you're on stream, guys, say hi. Say hi, chat. Uh, we're having a bit of fun with all of this. Um, we did earlier, actually, I, I was gonna wait for the surprise for this, but we dropped a doctor in here, which was pretty, uh, pretty fun. Uh, so that, that was nice profit, but we're gonna be talking about that in the main profit of everything. We're gonna be talking, uh, about, you know, all of those big drops and, uh, how much profit you make even if you don't get a drop, say, like a doctor, like I, uh, I on the stream a client did. Uh, lol. Alright, picking the rest of this up. Uh, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. Now, the biggest thing I will say, obviously I said, you know, your build doesn't really matter, although defenses kind of do matter. If you die, um, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. You also really want to make sure that your portal is as close to all of your towers as possible because uh, if you portal back in after dying, your towers will, you know, everything will activate again. Everything will start, you know, running. But if you're not near your towers, they despawn. And then, you know, potentially a few bosses can get through. On these Blight Ravaged maps, if two bosses get through, it's a, it's a failure. One boss does a little bit over half health to the main area, uh, to, to the actual, you know, uh, pump itself. So you have to really, really make sure that uh, if you let one boss through, try not to let any more bosses through. All right, and that's pretty much it right there. We'll just jump out, and I'll pick up the rest of that loot in a moment. Um, and uh, this is the strategy that I've been using as well. I've got a couple of large quad dump tabs that everything goes into, but before it all goes into the large dump tab, I put it into this small tab right here. Um, I'm not actually going to do it right now because, um, uh, you know, I've, I've still got to clean this and then get all of this in. But, you know, I put it into here, then I tally it through Exilence next. I go, like, take a snapshot. That'll take a snapshot of that one stash tab. Um, it tells me how much I have, uh, but I, I've also made sure that I uh, altered all of the prices of these uh, oils because they uh, show up in Exilence next a little bit too expensive. Uh, and then I tally that down. I put this into my stash tab. You know, uh, the cost for the most part, they're 25 chaos each. Uh, all of this is coming through. We then put the qual the the quantity in the map, which I forgot to actually put in. I think that one was 105, but I'll go back and make sure that that's all good. And then we put, obviously, the profit right here as well, which I'm not going to put just yet. But you can see here, the big old doctor drop right here really uh, skyrocketed the profit. Uh, and the rest of the stuff that we've got, we've got a full dump tab right here of everything. And then we're starting on a second one here of everything that we dropped in 21 maps. Now, that's all I really have to say. If you've got any questions whatsoever, Come catch me live on stream and ask any questions there. Twitch.tv slash this is Badger. Or you can comment down below and I'll try to get to those ones. But stream is the best place because I'm live a lot at the moment. Thanks so much for watching everyone. And until next time, Badger is out.